Hi everyone, Peter Lisiaga here, and I'm officially going to go live. Well, I'm live now, aren't I? <laughs> but at 12 o'clock, I just wanted to come on a little earlier, make sure that everything was connected well and right, and uh, I wanted to share some information with you guys, so I wanted to make sure that was set up correctly. But uh, I know many people right now, in the course of the day, this is your lunchtime, and it's actually a perfect time for me because if I'm not training, uh, then I'm having my lunch. Typically, I'll eat before 12 o'clock so that I can train at 12 o'clock. But today, I'm not training today because I woke up with a very stiff neck and my my hands are very uh, 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 injured a bit. So uh, I decided not to train today. But what's great about this is that I'm able to go on and share with you uh, parents out there, my community, some of the things that... Uh, that I've been want, wanting to share. I know the last couple of days, several weeks, I've been going live a lot, just trying to share a lot of information with our community about the work that I do. Over the last couple of days, I've been making phone calls, speaking to parents, connecting with parents and students uh, from Donato Karate Center, whether it's at the school, during classes, or uh, via phone call, and some of them come in for private lessons. And they have questions, and a lot of the questions are around how martial arts can help our students, our family, our children, and our community. So I wanted to talk about that today, so give me a minute, and I'm going to get everything together. I want to go, I don't want to go ahead and jump ahead, but right now what you see right in front of you on the screen here is uh, one of the first things I'll talk about. And I'll share a little bit more about that right now. It all has to do with reflecting in life. So you know, as I wait for people to come on, and uh, if you're here, I don't know who's actually uh, who's actually watching right now uh, because I, I, I can't really see what's going on on Facebook because I'm on a, in a software that allows me to share my screen and my video with uh, Facebook Live. So I just want to give it a couple of minutes. So... Uh, uh, We'll wait for some people here. So let me just go, I just want to go on my smartphone to make sure that this is happening. And then I'm going to go ahead and see if I can share this with some of the groups that I am a part of so that everyone has an opportunity to, to really uh, to share because I'd love to hear from everyone. And then at the same time, uh, I'd like to uh, make sure that people know that we're, we're going live, that we're actually live. I did put on a message. It was on Facebook. I put a message on earlier today, about I think about 45 minutes ago, about an hour ago, saying that I was going to go live at 12. So we have about four minutes. And so let me go ahead and go to the groups and sh go ahead and share this. I'm first going to go to my page. Let me see, make sure that I'm, because I think I am live. So bear with me, everyone, as I go live. Check to see if it's live. Oh yeah, I can see it live here. Good, I got it muted. Okay, so let me go ahead. Uh, what I'd like to do is go ahead and share this with our, our Mount Laurel group and the parents, th and the families there. And, and I do this, you know, I, I share all this. Really, I want to reach out to moms and dads, parents, even grandparents, guardians of children. You know, this day and age is not uncommon that, uh, that children are coming in and being enrolled in our program you know, by their grandparents or guardian, you know, and so that's not uncommon. Of course, we, most of our students are enrolled with, uh, by their parents. And so, but it's, uh, I want to make sure that our community, people in the community that, that have been following me, that have been uh, supportive of the work that I'm doing in the community, not only myself, but my wife as well, uh, just helping and serving the, as best as possible. And I uh, want to make sure that everyone knows that we're here. So let me go ahead and put this up on our Mount Laurel. Then I'm going to do it on a couple of other groups. I know part of the Burlington group. And so let me go put this in live right now. Join me. Excellent. So bear with me, everyone. I apologize. So, And I'm sure if uh, people are still going to come on, hopefully maybe that they're taking their lunch. I do have my, my tea. Uh, some green tea here. Very nice. So I shared that. 
on the Mount Laurel group. Let me go ahead and share this also. A couple, a couple of other groups. The Burlington group. And I've had, I, I've only had, I, I know I share quite a bit. I share a lot of content here and live. My hope is to really share uh, stuff that you guys, uh, you know, are interested in. And a lot of stuff that I share is based on the people that have been asking me questions, the conversations that I have. I speak to parents uh, every day and, uh, and they ask questions or they make comments to some of the things that I've said on the floor with the students. So th this is where I get the ideas. Like right now, I wanted to share this today because I just had so many parents still wondering how martial arts fits into everyday life and, and does martial arts make sense? You know, you know, you know, because it does cost money. And so does it make sense to, to spend money or shall I say invest money or is it an investment? Is it a waste, you know, of money? Is it just an activity? So this, these are questions that I get so often that, that I wanted to go ahead and share about the things that I do right now here. So let me go ahead and share this on a couple of other sites. I'm going to put this on our, our uh, students group. So that people could join on in there. And then I'll put it up on our, oh, on our DKC page, Donato Karate page. Go there. This way people know. This way you can chime in. And uh, if you're if you're here, go ahead and write in the comments. I, I get a little bleep on the side if somebody comments. And just let me know you're here. And talking about parenting, talking about martial arts, talking about what I do in martial arts, why I do what I do in martial arts. And so uh, if you are a family, uh, if you're a student of martial arts and uh, you ha or you have your children in martial arts, you know, what have you benefited from uh, martial arts? If you have students or you have children that are in martial arts and you, uh, your children have maybe reached the level of black belt, which is pretty incredible, very incredible that a, a child reaches the level of black belt. If your child did, you know, why? Why did you invest the money? What did you get out of it? What were the benefits for you, uh, uh, specifically for you and your family? And and how has it helped you? I know the other day, a couple of weeks ago, I was talking to Master Donato. And uh, we were talking about, I asked him questions about the history of DKC. And Master Donato started, uh, started Donato Christ at the back in 1994. And uh, I asked him about the first student and about the first black belt. And the first black belt, a uh, young lady named Rowena Padrina. And I remember meeting her in 1999 when I first came on board with Master De Donato. She was a young lady. I think she was about 16 years old at the time. And, and impressive. And she was the first black belt. And I actually, you know, looked her up. And she's actually out in California. She works for um, the public broadcast. PBS uh, um, uh, channel, and I think she's a producer on that, which is pretty awesome. So I connected with her and asked her, you know, all these years later, how has martial arts benefited you, or has it? And she sent me this long letter uh, talking about the benefits of martial arts, talking about, you know, when she came to Master Donato and started training in martial arts at such a young age and what she got out of it. So it was pretty powerful, and, and I haven't shared it yet. I, I, I still need to share that. But that's why I wanted to come on today, being that I'm not training today simply because, you know, I have some injuries that I need to nurse through, and I got to rest my body, and I, I got to be healthy to teach. So I wanted to go live. So anyway, let me go ahead and get started. And if you're here, just let me know. Just make a comment in there. Say, I'm here. And uh, if you have a child in martial arts, let me know if you do. I'd love to hear from you. Okay, guys. So this slide that I have here uh, is an exercise that I did several years ago. You know, I have mentors in my life, and I've seen the power of mentors in my life, and I started seeing that years ago. And one of the exercises that one of my mentors asked me to do was to do a timeline. He said, Peter, you know what? I want you to do a timeline. I want you to reflect back over your years and take out a lot of little pieces of paper, small papers, like little stickums, and write down the ups 
of your life and the downs of your life. You know, like the you know you know the, the troubles that you had, the things that you remember, whatever you remember, the good and the bad, the ugly, everything, and write all this down in little separate pieces pieces of paper. Then create a timeline um, from maybe when you were born to your current age, and then break it down to maybe three or four sections, uh, which is what I did. And then he said, just put lines on there where there's a line and. You know, then you start in the line below the line are like the bad experiences. So those are the valleys of your or life of your life, and then the mountaintops of your life. So he says, just start putting these stickums in there, put put them in there, the lows and the highs. And then once you've done all that, step back and look at your life. And then, uh, of course, then he and I got together. I showed him this. And then I gave him the permission to ask questions. And what was powerful about this, that I saw my life, I saw the ups and downs. And I reflected on the lessons that I learned in life. And my greatest, most valuable lessons that I learned in life were in those dark experiences, those hard experiences of my life, those valley experiences of my life, where I learned the greatest, greatest lessons. That's where I learned how to be a fighter. That's where I learned that I had what it took to get out of where I was. And so that really, really taught me a lot. It was these huge aha moments. And especially when I had my mentor asking deeper questions, going deeper into some of these experiences and what I learned. In the, and, you know, so it was powerful. So I highly recommend, if you've never done this before, to do it. And you really get this empowering perspective of of the power that you have to get through some hard times and uh, if you've lived as many years as I have not I'm not I haven't lived as long as I expect to live because I expect to you know live to a hundred that's my goal I have 43 years to get to a hundred but I've lived uh, 57 years and so I've lived enough years to have some dark experiences and so uh, that's the first thing I did before I came on here with you guys to reflect on this uh, again. And the one thing that we all know, there's simply no guarantees in life. You're going to go through life. There are going to be ups and downs of life. And that's the same thing for our children. And so martial arts for me is a powerful tool. And I saw that um, in my life because I started martial arts when I was nine years old. And it was just by chance, by accident. My One of my neighbors, he lived in the same uh, building that I lived in knocked on my door and he said, hey, look, they're doing karate classes in the community center. I grew up in the Bronx and I lived in the projects. We had a community center and uh, a black belt from one of the local schools was doing free martial arts there. And my friend Eric invited me to come and join him. I had no idea what it was, but I said, it's free. Sure, I'm there with you. We went and that was the beginning of my journey of martial arts. And now when I looked back on my timeline, my personal timeline, my ups and downs, martial arts factored in in there. It's when I became a warrior and I learned how to be a warrior, be a fighter. And, you know, I had to evolve through all that to where I am today. But it was prominent, dominant in my life. And so I just thought I wanted to share that with you. Just give you guys some, uh, you know, context of, you know, just very little context of me, my martial arts, my life, the ups and downs, just like you, you know, you, some tough times and you know if you if you've been frus frustrated angry if you lost your temper if you've done the dumbest things that uh, that you could think of and you're here to talk about it I'm just like I'm just like you this just because I'm a master instructor does not mean you know I am immune to my humanness and we all struggle with that and so that's very important because uh, we're all the same we're all doing the best that we can on this journey you know, as human beings and as uh, now as parents, because I'm speaking to parents and I'm a parent and the power of martial arts. Now, I know uh, every time I tell people, hey, martial arts is power in martial arts or, you know, your black belt strong and all that. It becomes almost like a cliche because I've been saying it for so many years, so many decades. And I hear it all the time, especially now on social. And it's like a cliche. And, and it is. It's a cliche, but it's it's real. It's real. And that's what I want to talk a little bit about here. So the one I want to share with you a couple of families that are currently training with us. 
or their child is training with. There's a family here, the Bolts family, and uh, they, they've been training for a couple of years with us. Both are black belts. And let me just let you hear what Mrs. Bolts has to say. Very short. Let me let you hear that. Yeah, we are we call ourselves a family martial arts school and I'm proud of that. And you know, in our school I know when I came to Master Donato there were families there. Uh, and the evolution of our program it was it's just miraculous and the work that master donato put into the curriculum and into learning because you know when he started martial arts and i know him pretty well when he started martial arts you know all his contemporaries everyone that trained with him and saw how intense he was as a student never thought that he'd be able to create a program that would that would be helpful useful for families and children because he was so hardcore he was so intense and at times scary that people just laughed you have a martial arts school and you're going to teach kids they would laugh but master donato humbled himself and put himself under instructors and teachers that continue to mentor him and help him. He'd studied, he learned, he tried this and that. When I came on board, he was learning all this and sharing it with me. And he introduced me to uh, Dave Kovar, who is still, still to this day, uh, our main mentor, incredible martial artist. And uh, Master Donato's put so much work into developing our family martial arts program so that Families like Mrs. Bolts can come and feel welcome here. And we're so proud of that. We are a family martial arts program. Now, if you are, let's say, someone who's a type A aggressive, and you want to get into like a UFC ground and pound kind of training, you'll come to our school and you right away will not feel like this is the school for you at all because we are a family martial arts school. You'll see a lot of children there and then you'll see parents and you'll see the siblings there. We're a family martial arts school, and I'm so proud of that. So let me introduce you to the next family here. This is a um, powerful family, Jean Pietro family, and I'm so proud to, to know them. They're incredible. This is one of our military families, and uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Jean Pietro is just incredible. His wife is incredible. Let me let you hear what they have to say. Pretty powerful. We started martial arts at Donato Karate. Because the kids wanted to do karate, and we knew before the end of their first class that this was the place to be. Highly referred by neighbors um, who had kids who went up to the class. So we knew that that they, uh, you guys knew what you were doing. Not a new what they were doing, and and the way that that the children were treated, spoken to, was amazing. We like the emphasis on discipline. Came to really try to instill values in the kids, as well as teach them the karate skills. I, uh, I had taken it when I was young, and I never followed through with it, and I regretted that. So I felt uh, I felt it was time to get them involved in something like that, and they had an interest in you know, martial arts and everything. So I figured it was a good outlet for them and uh, an opportunity to learn some skills and get them to stay, have fun doing it. But I think that it's value in and of itself is going to increase the they, they, they learn. We never had a problem with them getting bullied or anything, but an added benefit that I didn't think, because of that, I didn't consider the fact that they're actually learning skills to defend themselves. But this, I was thinking of a, a long-term goal of black belt and whatever comes with that, but they're actually learning skills that can help them if they're you know, even at this stage. So that's, that's a benefit I get. I had, a, I, had, I had an unrealized goal as a child to learn martial arts myself. And I saw how much fun they were having it, and I'm thinking this is a good opportunity to for me, it took us one family class to be here a few minutes early and see the kickboxing going on to say, hey, I could do that. They could all sit and sacrifice a little bit for mommy while she goes out and does the kickboxing. I like it a lot. Oh, I definitely would recommend it to families to come and train with the family, whether it's doing kickboxing. 
kickboxing and karate or just karate. The environment, the atmosphere, you guys are so welcoming. The not karate is so welcoming to them. And understanding of different ages and disabilities and making it all work at the exact same time. You have a four-year-old and a 40-year-old training on the same floor and not feeling left out or put upon. That's powerful. And I love the fact that uh, they heard about us. And Master has been around uh, since 94. So, and I've been here since 99 with working with Master Donato. So we've been in this uh, community for a long time. And we are now teaching the children of some of the students that we have. So this is powerful to know that uh, people are talking about us. And everywhere I go, and I'm, uh, my wife is on a couple of boards in Mount Laurel. And I help out with some of the, some of the boards as well. And whenever we go out, whenever I go out, they're always um, uh, saying how they're hearing about Donato Karate, heard so much about Donato Karate. And now that my daughter is full-time teaching martial arts there, the parents are talking about this young lady who's so impressive. And it's great to hear other families uh, hear about us and then decide to come on and then to hear this family here. Now, all of them train in martial arts. Uh, this was done uh, a couple of, uh, a couple of years ago. Now we have the, the second degree black belts in there. Little the little girl that was in the picture is now a gold belt. The mom is now a gold belt, and they have uh, they have another son that's uh, that uh, I think she wasn't even pregnant with him here. <laughs> that's how long they've been with us. So it's pretty powerful to see that. So let me introduce you to one more family because it's important that you see the families that are in your community that are participating in martial arts and going way beyond the kicks and the punches. This is uh, right here, the Kazersky family, another powerful family. I'm so proud of the work that they put into raising their children, and especially Christopher, who's had you know a, a, some incredible challenges, and we all do. And it was awesome to see him grow and develop. And this uh, here's what they had to say at this time. Awesome, and uh, thank you, uh, parents. I love it. So, Christopher, right now, he's a <laughs> can you believe it? Second degree going for third, I think he's third degree now, but he's a lot taller than his parents, and he's doing a great job. So, you could hear just uh, the benefits of martial arts, what the family, how the family utilized martial arts again. Very little to do with kicks, punches, chokes, arm bars, very little, but has everything to do with developing oneself. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. What I want to let you guys know, hey, I'm a, you know, I'm a parent, and I, I know the, the preciousness of children, because my children are precious to me, and I know your children are precious to you. And I'm proud of the work that I've done within my family as a dad, as a husband, you know, as this as the provider in my family, but not only that, I've been able to share my knowledge with my community through martial arts at Donato Karate Center. And so I'm proud of the work that I've done. I'm proud of my wife and the work that she's done. And those of you, you know, know being married and being, you know, it, there's a lot of, you know, a lot of tough times in there. And my wife and I, we're going to be celebrating 31 years of marriage in November this year. So we've been in the ups and downs of martial arts. 
And so I'm proud of the work that we've done. And knowing that we've done this and we've raised our children and I was there, my wife was there through the thick and thin is empowering. And seeing how martial arts factors in there, I'm proud. Look at my son there. You know, he, that's when he's two years old, started martial arts. Both my kids started when they were about two years old. Yesterday, it was awesome to see one of the siblings of our students at two and a half years old get on the floor, get on a dot, and just did what they were watching their sister do. It was pretty incredible, pretty remarkable. So uh, it was awesome. So I'm proud of the work that's been done. Okay, guys, we know parenthood is hard. I know parenthood is hard. It's scary. And I spoke to, I was speaking to a young dad the other day. He's got two kids. And I could see the fear in his eyes and, you know, trying to do what he can to provide for his family. But yet at the same time, having those fears of, gosh, what happens if something happens to me? What happens if something all of a sudden happens? Because guess what? It does. We know that. But, you know, we get through it, don't we? We get through it. And martial arts helps with that. It's really scary. Now, you guys know this movie, Parenthood, right? So uh, I'm not, I'm not going to show you the whole thing, but it was one of my favorite movies. How many guys remember this movie, Parenthood? <laughs> I love this movie, and it's one of my favorite movies. If, if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend you watch it. And watch the R version. Uh, but you know, I wouldn't recommend having your kids there. Uh, however, these days, what kids are watching these days... Uh, you know, it blows my mind. But anyway, it's ours. It's a, there is cursing in there, but but it's so real. Parenting, and it's a lot of fun. Of course, Steve Martin and a bunch of other people who are great actors. Anyway, but parenting is hard. So I know that. It's it's hard. You know it. And I, I became a dad when uh, back in 1983. So it's about a long time ago. And I failed horribly as a dad the first time around. I was a horrible spouse and I was a horrible dad. And uh, I paid the price for it, but more importantly, my kids paid the price for that, My uh, the first time being uh, a dad. And since then, uh, right now I have a daughter that's in her 30s. She's uh, married and has five of her own kids. My oldest son has passed away. All that, experiences of life, and I've been through that. I've made a lot of mistakes, but when I met my wife, and uh, uh, Renee, when I met her in 1986, then I, I knew that if I was going to commit to this, that I, I, I had to learn the lesson. I had to evolve and change, and that's what I did. This was my second chance to to get it right, to do better than I did the first time. And it's funny because my older daughter, uh, a lot of times she'll say that, you know, uh, you know, why weren't you that kind of dad with me? And I said, sweetie, I'm sorry. that's just the way it worked out. And but. This time around, I, was, I got it right, and I'm proud of that. And I had a second chance. I learned a lesson, and I'm reaping the benefits of that. So when you guys see how I communicate with my children, and you see the empowerment of my daughter and my son, the work that they do, my wife does, it's because I learned a valuable lesson when I messed up the first time. And I became a warrior. I trained like a warrior, and I knew... Uh, I was going to fight a good fight, which is one of my favorite sayings, fighting a good fight. Get up in the morning, fight a good fight. And so martial arts for me trains me to be a warrior, not like this, but with my mind and my heart so that I, what I know is right, I stand firm on what it's right. So I learned the lesson and I see the benefits of that with my own children. And one of the sayings that I have it is something powerful for me based on my faith and my belief. Some of you may know me to be, you know, a, ma a believer and, you know, I believe in God and Christ. And even though I don't throw that in people's faces or anything like that, that my, my whole, whole mindset is that you will see my belief in my walk, not so much in my talk. But this is one of the things that, that I, that's one of my mantras, raise up my child in the way they should go. And knowing that they might not learn the lesson in that moment, but my job as a parent is to teach, to pour into them, not only through my words, more importantly through my actions. And this is one of the valuable lessons that I learned in my life, okay, is that my actions have to teach and then my words have to bring understanding. So I want to raise up my child in the way they should go so that when they are old, when they go out into the real world, they, they will be equipped with knowledge because I passed it on to them. My wife passed 
it on to them. Teachers, people who are influencers in their life and who wanted the best for my children, you know, poured into that. But more importantly, as the parent, my number one responsibility and I've been ordained for this to raise up my child in the way they should go. Martial arts was a powerful aspect of that, a powerful tool for that. That's why both my kids are black belts. My wife's a black belt. Martial arts was a powerful tool for that. So raise up that child. So now I don't know everything, and I'm not going to pretend to know everything. And you know, but I do know this: that with 37 years of parenting experience, the good, the bad, and the ugly because it was ugly at times, I was ugly at times, you know, with that, and then 48 years of training in martial arts, and 19, uh, over 19 years of training and teaching martial arts full-time to students, to kids as young as two years old, you know, and then my 57 years of living the ups and downs of life, of real life, experiencing real life. I have one recommendation for everyone everyone is that train in martial arts more importantly train so that you are training like a warrior get your discipline in order get your self-control in order your your emotional control all that happens in the environment that we've created we being martial artists that focus on the personal growth and empowerment of people of children of humanity and so i know for me family is everything and to parents, if a parent were, were to ask me, Peter, what's the one thing you would recommend? Martial arts. However, not just any martial arts school, because when I say martial arts, you know, what do you envision? I know when I was a kid, this is what I envisioned. I would see this in the magazines, you know, all these, these you know, type A aggressive kind of advertisements. You know, so that's what I remember. I don't know how many of you guys are as old as I am. Who remembers these kind of ads in the comic books or these horror magazines, you know, all these muscle bodybuilding magazines? I, this is what I remember, this stuff here. Also in the movies, you know, watch the movies. And here's one of my favorite scenes there. Check this out. How many guys know what movie this is from? Okay. So you guys remember that? So one of my favorite scenes. But this is not martial arts okay so what really 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 what is martial arts and what is it for real so let's talk about that here really quickly an article that i wrote a couple of years ago this quote this uh, what i wrote in here that that uh the true meaning behind martial arts is to better oneself to strive to become better and overcome your fears and all the things that will bring you down that's what martial arts for me is about it's about helping myself to become stronger and more empowered and then to pass on that knowledge to other people okay now how do you find a great martial arts school it's really easy that's what i love it about uh, about the technology that we have these days when i was a kid i just by chance happened about, uh, about uh, to find it because of my friend uh, who heard about it through his brother-in-law and that's how I found out about it. Other than that, I didn't knew nothing about martial arts. But now we have the technology. You can actually go online and Google martial arts. So the first thing, I have six things you can do here real quickly. You know, you Google it and Google your town and then your town martial arts. For example, you'll type in Mount Laurel Martial Arts for Children. You know, or your Mount Laurel Martial Arts guy. I wonder who comes up. <laughs> <laughs> See if I still come up. Check that out. But anyway, check the reviews of the schools that are closest to you. And check the reviews on Google and check the reviews on on Facebook and see what they're saying. Go to their pages. Now, if they're not on Facebook and not active on Facebook, that should give you some insight because you want to find out. Get some intelligence on these schools. Also, go to their websites. See what they have there. And go through it all and see if it's stock photography or is it real pictures and videos of, of the school, of the teacher, of the students, and see if you get a, a real sense of this school. And then, and then, was it go to, let's see, right here, get a sense of what each school is like. Is it family oriented, or is it a ground and pound one, or is it a tournament kind of school? Because they're out there. We have schools out there that are, when you go in, you see trophies everywhere. 
and you see it's 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 very competitive because they're they are a competition school or you'll go into a school and you'll see let's say there's a ring in there and then there's a lot of bags that are beaten up all over the place and you and there's really you know that the gym sense in there and then you see the mats are ratted out there and you know and if you come into the class you're hearing a lot of you know pounding because why because this is a ground and pound kind of school so you want to see if it's the school that that you're looking for now i'm talking about family martial arts you won't see any of that in our school you won't see ground and pound there you won't see trophies in our school I don't, we don't have any, we don't have one trophy in us at our school and uh we don't uh we don't have that uh uh that ground and pound definitely not so at the same time see what they have to offer on the website they all schools these days have a special offer you go to our school denadokarate.com you'll see that uh, you can see our class schedule and you can have access to what is our current new student special of course we always want you guys to give us a call i always recommend that you know which is what i say in this last thing create your top three from what you've done on your research and then you call them so you can talk to them and then find out about their schedule answer whatever ask whatever questions you have and then schedule a time to meet the instructor that will be teaching your child so important okay and yes hey if you find out enough you've heard about the school you've seen me here you want to go right to our website and and join our beginner program right on our website you can do that but give us a call and find out about us talk to us ask your questions we love that master donato and i yesterday we're talking about how we love the phone above everything else if we were to lose all this technology all of it all we would need is the phone and that's it if we lost the phone then we'd be going out there meeting you person to person which is again the the, the best the best nothing like meeting someone face to face and you get a real sense of who they are. And that's why it's important that you schedule time to visit the school. Okay, guys, so let me move on here. And uh, the most important question is simply this. What makes this martial arts school a great fit for my family, for your family? And as with every and any great school, it's all about the people that work at the school. It's about the teachers, about the assistants, about the staff, about the administration. They all work together to serve the community, to serve the family, to serve your children. So that's the most important thing, the, the people. You want to get a sense of who the people are and meet them. The style of martial arts does not matter. Uh, doesn't matter whether it's a stand-up martial art or a ground martial art, it doesn't matter. What matters is the instructor and whether that instructor has shown you that they are sincerely interested in helping you reach your family's goals and you get a sense of their core values. This way it complements your core value. Does not mean everyone has to believe in the same thing. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about that, you know, the core fundamental uh, beliefs of what is right, what is decent, what is respectful, and all these core values you want to see and sense and feel when you walk into the school, when you meet the instructors and the people of the school. That's the most important thing. And the next thing uh, is this, is this let me go ahead and put this down, is look to see what a martial arts class is like. So what are you going to look for? You're going to look to see if that the classes are fun and exciting and they are age appropriate. The energy, everything is age appropriate. The way we would teach for little champions, look at this, this is a little champions class here. We got a beach ball there, we got little kids there on, on their dots, and listen to my energy. High energy, being entertaining for them to keep them keep them involved and focused on what needs to get done on the task at hand so everything has to be age appropriate from the drills to the exercises that we do to the techniques that we teach to the explanations of the martial arts techniques that we teach them it all has to be age appropriate and all the mat chats that we have when we talk about focus following direction being first-time listeners are all age appropriate what we how we teach 
with a little champion, a four, three, four, five, and six year old is very different than how we communicate and teach to the bigger kids, to eight, nine, 10, 11 year olds, and the teenagers and the adults. We have physical, you know, we also want to see the physical and emotional safety in that environment. How are people communicating with each other? How's the teacher communicating? Are they respectful? And then is the class well structured? And is it consistent? Is, it, uh, is the class being led by the example of the instructors? Okay, you want to look for that. Everyone does their best, forgets the rest, and this is what we say. But it starts with the leadership of the senior instructor, and then it filters down. Okay, the influence is, I uh, heard it the other day, from, I think John Maxwell said that influence is top from the top down, and leadership from the top down. That's important. You want to look for that. The discipline and nurturing environment. It's got to be inspiring, encouraging, and motivating. And sometimes it's going to be tough. It's going to be hard. But does not mean that it's not inspiring, encouraging, and motivating. So that's very, very important. The next thing is that you got to look at the schedule. Give us a call. Go to the websites if they have the class schedule. We'll make it easy for you guys to see our class schedule. Choose the day, time, and then you know figure out what you want out of the program and call the schools, find out, and call them directly. And keep in mind, we have thousands of families that are on this path right now. What path? The path to being a better human being. Not so much on the path to black belt. I love it that everyone becomes a black belt, but that's not realistic. Things happen, but if they come in, they being everyone from a three-year-old all the way through to a mature parent, an adult, a grandparent coming in and training, and within three months, within one month, they start building this mindset. Now, the longer they stay, the longer you stay, the greater it is for you to retain and learn this knowledge and retain it, but Hey, you come for three months, six months, two years, 10 years, you build on top of that and you learn things that are going to be invaluable to you and your children. We have thousands of families that have been on this path. We have hundreds right now that are taking uh, this path right now, only at our school. Then we talk about the other schools. And I know many schools in our area. So if you're not in Mount Laurel, if you're maybe in Pennsylvania or up North Jersey or in New York or even in California, we have such a great network of great teachers. Let me know. And if you don't live in Mount Laurel, give me a call or send me a message and say, hey, I live in this town and I'll send you a link to a school that I know personally of an instructor that's doing a powerful job empowering their community. Okay, family, so anyway, moms, dads, we have an opportunity here to empower our children and to have a powerful advantage for to help them stand up for the harsh realities of life, of the real world. Yes, they're gonna have those ups of life, but they're also gonna have the downs of life. So we're going to empower them with tools and we're gonna help raise them up in the way they should go so that when they go out there into the real world, a lot of times sooner rather than later, they'll be equipped with tools. So please, please give me a call, 856-235-0414. I'd love to schedule a time for you to come in and meet me meet Master Donato, Mrs. Donato. I'd love for you to meet and watch my daughter teach. Master Klein, incredible instructor, and all our other assistant instructors, uh, Colin McGill, and all the other instructors that support us. Please give me a call. I appreciate you for spending this time with me. Lunchtime for many of us. And uh, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Have a great day. If you have any questions, contact me. Appreciate those of you that did uh, join me on this. And I have to go back and check because I can't see who's here or not. I'm hearing blings, 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 but I don't know who's here. Anyway, leave a comment or not. doesn't matter to me. I'm just right now, it is, it is well with my soul because I got out of my heart out there to you guys. And this is what I wanted to do today. So thank you so much for spending this time with me. Look forward to hearing from you. Let me know how I can serve you and your family. You guys have a great day. God bless.